and she wouldn't harm a fly. She's a really good person, and that's why it's so difficult to think, you know, that she's the one that, that got caught up in this. The last time Jennifer Damty heard from her daughter was a panicked phone call early Saturday morning. Kim didn't realise that there was like three, about seven or eight Toyota vans full of um, terrorists, and they just shot everywhere. They just shot them, slaughtered them like ducks, and that's the reason I'm here. Because I want the world to condemn this behaviour. Rockets were flying overhead as armed Hamas militants descended upon the Supernova Music Festival that she was attending. Her father told her to find shelter. Since then, radio silence. Maybe she's been held as a hostage in Gaza. I don't even want to think about that. That's came as a child. Damti is living a mother's worst nightmare, one that's shared by hundreds, if not thousands, through Israel, unsure if their loved one is injured, killed, or taken hostage. As a mother, can you try and just describe what it's like waiting for news? You can't sleep. All I can think about is where she is, if she's suffering, if she's still alive. I just want her back. I have three daughters. I can't imagine my life without Kim. This is the other major crisis Israel faces right now. A hostage situation like no other, unprecedented in both scale and complexity. There are at least 100 known captives, including Israeli soldiers and civilians, a list that includes women, children, senior citizens, even an 85-year-old Holocaust survivor, many of them abducted from their homes and taken to the Hamas-held Gaza Strip. President Biden saying today, Americans likely among the hostages. The stakes for those hostages and their families intensifying as the Israeli military bombards and prepares to invade the very place they're being held. She's 10 years old here. Here so. she's 10. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sasha Ashayev's 19-year-old sister, Karina, is among those now behind enemy lines. She, wants her, she just wants her to come home back safe and sound. In this video circulating online, the young Israeli Defense Force soldier can be seen bloodied and bound. At first I saw this and I didn't think it was her. I just swiped, swiped next. Her face was in blood, she was screaming. We identified her by her nose, her brows, her chest. And uh, we know it was her. Sasha was just one of the many to recognize a loved one in the graphic videos circulating online. He loved to laugh, he loved to be with his family. Israeli-American Uriel Babot was an ocean away from his brother El Kana, who was captured at that music festival. He's seen wounded in this video. Nightline co-anchor Juju Chang spoke with Uriel. When you see your brother's face on that video, what do you see? I can see that he's, uh, he's afraid. He's so scared. He told us El Kana had just opened his own ice cream shop in Tel Aviv. Masala ice cream. It's an Indian ice cream. Masala ice cream. He just traveled all the way to India to bring something special to Israel. He's a funny guy. He really loved. Every day for him, if you have one dollar on his pocket, he will give you two. Uriel and a friend are now back in Jerusalem, desperate for updates. What are you hoping to do? I'm going to go directly to my parents' house, of course, and just support, support and support. Because I want that everybody will know that we really want to bring them back. There is no other choice. As Israel gears up to launch a full-scale offensive, the IDF says it's notified over two dozen families so far that they have had a loved one known to be kidnapped. This, as Hamas has warned, that they will execute hostages. Because they expect this ground incursion, they're going to put a lot of these hostages in areas where they expect these preparatory fires to take place. That is something they're using right now to try to protect themselves. I don't know if Israel even knows where these hostages are. So the hostages have caused a great dilemma on the operational planning side of this potential uh, ground invasion. Back at the Ashayev home, her sister Sasha tells me Karina was doing her military service at a base on the Gaza border. But she says after a few weeks of training, Karina was told she wouldn't need a weapon. The girls weren't prepared for this. They don't know. They, they have no guns. Karina made one last call home when she saw the militants coming. She felt she knew that she wasn't going to come home. Yes. She, she, she absolutely knew that she's going to die.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.